Now it happens that um, the cellular empire is known through a particular type of material, namely uh, permanent inscriptions on stone um, as part of um, its administrative history. And those documents, um, which have been coming thick and fast in the last decade, have really um, illuminated both how the Seleucid Empire works and a particular um, you know, instance or episode in Seleucid history, namely the Maccabean Revolt, or what we call the Maccabean Revolt. And what I argue, if you look at in the Seleucid context, it looks quite normal. It looks like a transaction which is not this very strange and exceptional transaction, but something rather familiar to us from Seleucid history. So one issue that's interesting is that um, we see that the Seleucid kingdom has a religious policy or religious presence of some sort. In Asia Minor, there is a priest of all the shrines, uh, probably inspired by Egyptian practice. Namely, all local shrines have some form of interaction, some form of mediating the relationship to the Seleucid state, probably through patronage um, and through administrative control, and it goes through, it goes through finances. And then, um, exceptionally, sensationally, in 2007, the so-called um, Heliodorus, or rather Olympiodorus steward, um, shows you that Seleucos IV, the predecessor of Antiochus III, um, is appointing a probably high priest over um, Koile, Syria, and, and Phoenicia, this new province. And this is an official who will have supervision and responsibility for interacting with local shrines. That, in a way, was the missing, one missing part of the puzzle, that Seleucid kings had a sort of Near Eastern um, religious thought, religious involvement in this, perhaps not from the beginning, um, um, perhaps something that develops gradually, but that this is present, that is part of what it is to be a king, is attention to local shrines. Now, the sensational thing, of course, is that this dates the same time as the episode of Heliodorus in, in Maccabees. Namely, uh, as many people immediately thought, we have the two sides of the transaction. The um, local source, the Jewish source, the Jewish source in Greek, the Maccabees, recording uh, an inspection by this figure, important figure, Heliodorus, and the document showing at the same time, as, in, as implied by the literary source, the imposition of this administrative control, um, patronage, inspection, interest in local shrines. The inscription found again in Asia Minor, and it dates to 180 BC. Um, it's about the foundation of the new city. It's a bunch of military colonists and local villagers, probably local elites, who petition the king, the Attilid king, for the permission to become a city. And they want laws, and they want a gymnasium. Okay. Immediately, again, people saw, good Lord, this looks like a Maccabean episode of local elites founding a polis with a gymnasium as being the center. The nature of this Antiochia in Jerusalem, of course, is unclear. I think, um, based on this, um, this document, this cluster of documents, the YouTube documents, that we're dealing with um, not the foundation of Jerusalem as a city, but the foundation of um, a royal city called Antioch next to Jerusalem. I, what local Jewish elites have now is the possibility to mediate with the royal state through an institution which the royal state fosters and likes, namely cities which carry the king's name. So this is in a way a defensive mechanism or a active interaction by local elites, um, a sort of gesture initiative from below. The last piece of the puzzle again for this inscription from Toriaion in Turkey, showing you that um, the community is addressed differently before and after its polis status. Now that immediately looks like what's going on in 2 Maccabees 11, namely that the king says, okay, you, know, um, I'm you can have the temple back. The interesting thing is that before and after that transaction, the first letter is addressed to an informed mass of Jews, and after the temple is given back and the laws are restored, it's addressed to the high priest and the institutions. Right? It's basically the same thing with Tori Ion um, dossier, namely the, the king said, okay, you are a community again, which means that the um, Jewish community was recreated 
upon petition, negotiation, whatever, by uh, local elites. At least that's what we can see in the documents. What surrounds this transaction, we don't know. Um, negotiation by riot, um, anachoresis, withdrawal, um, some form of revolt, perhaps, but we don't know. Just all this is the background to the Maccabean revolt. And the, the, the name of the game here, the exercise, is to see at the end of just patiently accumulating things with inscriptions, what do we have? What does the picture look like? And then the difficult thing is going to be to draw the conclusions. Why look at the Maccabees with inscriptions? The, there are two reasons for this. One is that this is material that illuminates the period. It provides not just the context, but explanation for what's going on. And two, because this material is constantly being renewed by new discoveries. I think that Judaism is um, the one catchword that he used, actually that he coined, in order to capture in one word the whole concept that in more tradition in a more traditional way was told through the whole narrative pattern of temple foundation. Um,